Okay, so here we'll talk about the Faraday's law. So Faraday's law of induction. So it says uh, the magnetic uh, the magnitude of the EMF E induced in a conducting loop is equal to the rate at which the magnetic flux phi B through the loop change with time. So here we define a new variable called uh, phi B, which is the magnetic flux magnetic flux. Uh, in chapter 23, we learn about uh, electric flux. So they share the same uh, same uh, symbol, uh, capital Phi. Okay, so at that time, this is uh, uh, electric flux. So it defined as uh, integration of uh, E dot dA. And and actually, we will consider the total flux for the Gaussian surface. So at that time, we have this circle at the integral side. So yeah, so that is for um, for the Gauss law. And here, uh, yeah, actually, we don't have we don't have this circle because here we don't do the surface integral for a closed surface, uh, which means that. This phi b is only integration of a uh, sorry b dot b dot dA something like this. Of course, this is a double integral, but in this test book, it's only use a single integral uh, single integral sign because yeah, as you can see here, dA vector is already a, an every vector. So yeah, so even though it does not uh, write double integral sign, you know, or oh, this should be a double integral okay so here this is the uh, Faraday's law so it says uh, we can state Faraday's law in a more quantitative way um, so it is written as this is E e equals negative and then the derivative of the uh, magnetic flux with respect to time and then take the minus sign okay so this E is called uh, uh, electromotive force. This E is uh, EMF, uh, electromotive force. Electromotive force. Okay, so it is somehow like a voltage, but not not uh, exactly equal to a voltage. But yeah, but at least. Is unit is volt or millivolt something like that. Okay, so on the right side, uh, you can see this is magnetic flux. So you can just calculate the magnetic flux if B is uh, uniform over the area, then it is like B times A. Otherwise, uh, you need to calculate it out. And then after you find the expression of the phi B of the magnetic flux, then you can take the derivative with respect to time and then take the minus sign. It will be the EMF uh, induced by the uh, magnetic flux changing. So all of, all of this EMF depends on changes of magnetic flux. Uh, if the magnetic flux doesn't change over a, an area, then there will be no uh, induced EMF or induced current. Okay, so if there are multiple turns and capital N turns, then you just simply multiply uh, the right hand side by capital N. Okay, so here it also said that the minus sign on the right hand side is referred to as a uh, Lenz law. So Faraday's law is the whole formula, and uh, uh, and the Lenz law only specify the negative sign on the right side. Okay, so we'll see why. Uh, we will uh, we will uh, just call this minus sign a lens law. Just name it. Oh, just name a minus sign because it would it is still quite complicated, and we'll see later. So here we'll talk, take a look at the sample problem first. So here it says uh, the long solenoid S has two hundred and twenty turns per centimeter and carries a current I. Its diameter D is uh, 3.2 cm. At the center, we place a 130 turn close pack core C of diameter D. 
the current in the solar is reduced to zero at a steady rate in uh, 25 milliseconds. What is the magnitude of EMF that is induced in the coil C? Why the current is uh, in the solar is changing? Okay, so here it means that we have a long solenoid S, which is the outer one, the blue one, the blue one. So it has so much turns, so many turns, and then it carries a current, which means that it will generate B field inside inside the solenoid. Okay, so yeah, and as it is solenoid, we will uh, assume that uh, the B field is uniform inside the solar line for every point okay so when we place or when we place uh, this coil inside the solar line yeah then there will be magnetic flux go through it okay so so yeah so as and then it also tells you that the current in the solar line is reduced to zero at a steady rate in 25 millisecond so so at the very beginning i is 1.5 a so it will generate generate the b fuel generate the b fuel and uh, so actually it is like a 5b should be equals to uh, b times a so because we already know that a b is uniform inside the solenoid for any cross section Okay, so B times A, A should be the should be the cross section area of coil C rather than S because uh, when we con con consider about the induced current or induced EMF for coil C, we only consider uh, the cross section area of C rather than the whole S. Okay, so this is this A is for uh, coil C. Okay. So um, so here we have a B equals mu zero I times small n, which is the B field generated by the solenoid. Okay, so this is mu zero is constant, the, the current, and also n. n is the number of turn per unit length, if you still remember in chapter 29. Okay, so it says at the very beginning, I is 1.5a so this is the b field generated at the very beginning and finally it, it is reducing to zero in a steady rate so finally i will be zero so phi b at at uh, 25 millisecond will be zero so at the very beginning uh, this is this is the magnetic force at t equals zero and and phi b will be, be zero at 25 millisecond. 25 millisecond. And it tells you that the, the, the current is reducing in a steady rate, which means that uh, the phi b should be something like reducing like this. Reducing like this. So this is the phi b at the beginning, and then phi b at 25 millisecond. So this is uh, phi b. Uh, t and this is t okay so when we try to take the derivative of the phi b with respect to time so we just consider it is a straight line because it tells you that uh, it reduces in a steady rate which means a constant rate of uh, decreasing so yeah so this is something like uh, d phi b dt so this and then take the minus sign it becomes a positive value okay so yeah so here we have a so mu zero is uh, 4 pi times 10 to negative 7 and then times i is 1.5 a n is this one but this is not si unit because si unit is meter rather than centimeter so we need to um, multiply this value by 100 because uh, a meter has a one uh, has one hundred uh, centimeter, okay. So multiply by one hundred, like this, and then the cross section area. For the cross section area, 
the diameter of coil C is 2.1 cm so this is a pi times a, a half of a 0 0.021 and then square okay so this is the cross section area of coil C and then this value is 1.44 uh, times 10 to negative 5 uh, Weber Weber okay I forgot to mention the the SI unit the SI unit for 5B the SI unit uh, for 5B 5B is uh, Weber uh, Weber okay the SI unit for B uh, for B is Tesla, okay. The SI unit for 5B is Weber. Okay, so yeah, so here, um, so here we will consider E equals negative N D5 B D T, or we may just consider it's a delta 5B delta T. And then 5b is actually decreasing like a 0 minus this uh, capital 5b which is this one so this is a negative value divided by 25 millisecond and then here we have another minus sign so it turns out to be a positive value and we can see that a uh, coil c coil c has 130 turn so we have 130 here and then 1.44 times 10 to minus fifth power all over uh, 25 millisecond. 25 millisecond. Okay, so this number is uh, 75 millivolt like this. Okay, so this sample problem just uh, lets you know uh, how to make use of the Faraday's law. Okay, so next uh, we, we, we will describe uh, the Lenz law. Yeah, so because it is quite complicated, although it is only a minus sign, but yeah, we need to spend some time to uh, explain uh, how to determine the direction of the induced EMF or the induced current. Okay, so here it says an induced current has a direction such that the mag uh, magnetic field due to this induced current opposes the change in the magnetic flux that induced the current. So it relates to the opposite, uh, relates to the change, change of the uh, magnetic flux. <laughs> okay, so the induced EMF has the same direction as the induced current. Mm, okay, so let's see this one. Let's see this one. Okay, so here this is the initial setting. Initial setting. Um, yeah, here you can see that. Here you can see that. Um, Uh, well, actually, the, the induced current create this field, try to offset the charge. So increase the external B view, induce uh, a current with a B view, B induce that. So actually, uh, outside, uh, outside this uh, setting, there is, there is something generating an external B view, generating the external B view. So this B is generated outside rather than the induced, uh, induced one because for this loop only it should have some magnetic flux and it should be changing to generate the B induced. So this is the external one. This is the external one. Okay, so here it says that if B is increasing if B is increasing, increasing means uh, for the previous moment uh, B is this large, and then at, for the next moment it is increasing. Okay, so in that case, uh, the B induced will be pointing upward. Will be pointing upward because uh, 
the changing is going to that side. This is the delta B. Delta B. Uh, yeah, delta B. So it will cause a 5B changing for this loop and then pointing to the pointing downward. Okay, so this loop will try to generate and induce B view pointing upward, trying to cancel this magnetic first changing. Of course, this delta B changing will cause uh, 5B changing uh, and then pointing downward. So it will, this loop will try to generate the B induced pointing upward, trying to cancel it, not exactly cancel it. The magnitude still depends on uh, on this equation. The magnitude still depends on this equation. Here we only consider the direction, which means the minus sign. So the minus sign means the 5B pointing downward is increasing. So it's trying to generate B induced pointing upward so that it will cancel parts of the uh, 5B changing. Okay, so in that case, using right hand rule, you can use your thumb point to pointing upward, and then your finger will follow this direction. So the I induce. So actually, this is this is I induce. Yeah, this textbook only use I, but if I just write it as a right I induce, then you know uh, this this I B induce and I induce is induced by the change of this uh, external B view. Okay, so this is the first case. Okay, so it says, uh, yeah, if B is increasing, uh, uh, yeah, so here B is increasing, so B induced pointing upward. Okay, so here, decreasing the external B view induce a current with a B induced that opposite the change. So here it means that, here it means that B at this moment is uh, this large, and then for the next moment, is 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 decreasing. It is decreasing. So it is like uh, the B the five B is decreasing, pointing downward. Yeah, if you consider five B is pointing downward, so the five B is decreasing. So if you take a negative d five B d t, okay. So this is. So, so the B in D should be pointing downward to cancel this. Decreasing of 5b, decreasing of 5b. So here 5b is pointing downward. And then using your right hand rule, you use the front pointing downward. Then you will see I induce is uh, like this direction, like uh, clockwise. Okay. So in the next case, um, so this B field uh, decrease and decrease. Up to up to the middle. So, for a specific moment, B will be will be zero, and then it try to increase in another direction, which means pointing upward. So here, when B is pointing upward and B is increasing, B is increasing, it will induce the B induce uh, pointing downward because uh, it is like B is B is increasing. So B induced should be pointing downward. And in that case, I induced is still uh, clockwise. And then finally, when B is very large and then it start when it starts to decrease, then which means that B uh, the five B pointing upward is decreasing. So B induced should be pointing upward to cancel this uh, this change. Uh, to trying to cancel this change. Uh, okay, so B induced will be pointing upward. Okay, so in that case, B is B is decreasing. So B induced try to pointing upward to cancel this change. Okay, so in that case, you use the thumb pointing upward, and then you will see uh, this I induced is counterclockwise. Okay, so so the I induced doesn't necessarily related to the direction of the B view, it only related to the to the uh, how it change. Depends on how it change. 
So if pointing to this side and uh, and increasing, then B induced pointing upward. Pointing to this side decreasing, also pointing upward. Yeah, and then if it is uh, pointing downward and uh, and decreasing, then I induce pointing downward. And then here, if it is pointing upward and increasing, then the B induced pointing downward. Yeah, something like this. Okay, so yeah, so you can see like this. I just draw this B, so you can see here. Uh, B is increasing. I just draw this one here. Draw this B here, so that. But yeah, they, they are they are different moment. So first the, first this uh, row, and then the next moment is this row, and then finally this row, something like this. Okay, so this is the uh, procedure of uh, Lenz law that. Uh, uh, tells you how to de how to determine the direction of the induced B view. Okay, so here we have an other sample problem. So here it says a conducting loop consisting of a half circle and uh, of radius r and three strict section. Uh, okay, so this is the half circle, and then this three is the uh, strict section. Okay, the half circle lies in a uniform magnetic field that is directly out of the page, so indic uh, indicated by these green dots. Okay, so the field ma magnitude is given by B equals 4t squared plus 2t plus 3. So this is the expression of B uh, to describe how this B view is changing. Okay, so with B in Teslas and T in seconds. Mm, okay, so in ideal battery with EMF E battery, so here we have a battery. So yeah, equals to two volt is connected to the loop, the resistance of the loop. So here we consider the resistance for the loop is two ohm. So what are the magnitude and direction of the EMF E induced? around the loop by field at t equals to 10 seconds. Okay, so here uh, we can determine uh, the absolute value of E induced, uh, sorry, E induced, E induced, the absolute value of it, because E induced is equal to negative n d phi dt. So let's just take the absolute value first so we can just ignore the, the negative sign and then we try to determine the direction of the uh, B induced or the current later here we only have one loop so capital N is 1 so 1 times the derivative is the derivative itself so here we have a D, DT and then 5B is B times A Okay, because B is uniform over the whole half circle, so so this uh, surface integration is nothing but a multiplication. Okay, so in that case, A is a constant. The the A the the loop here doesn't move at all, so A doesn't change. The only variable change with time is B, because that B is a function of t okay so here we have a times db dt okay so in this case a is actually the area of a half circle so it is a pi r square over 2 so this is the uh, area of half circle and then we have d dt and then we can plug in this expression. B is actually this one. 4t squared plus 2t plus 3. Okay. So in this case, this is pi times 0 0.2 squared all over 2. And then here we have 
uh, the derivative of this one, uh, t squared is 2t, so 4t squared is 8t, and then plus 2t, the derivative of 2t is 2, and then the derivative of, of 3 is 0. So it, we have this expression. Okay, so here we would like to find E induced at t equals 10, 10, 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds. So we just plug in uh, t equals 10, t, t equals 10 seconds. So 8 times 10 plus 2, okay. So this value is 5.2 volt, 5.2 volt. And next we would like to define the direction, not only the magnitude, but also the direction of the EMF. So here we can use the, yeah, so you can see B is, has this expression. And then here we define B is pointing out of the page. And of course T is a positive value. It is from zero to, to 10 seconds. So T is a positive value. So B is also a positive value at posi uh, positive time. Yeah. Okay, and you can see here, the derivative of it is AT plus two. And at 10 seconds, so this is still a positive number. This is still a positive number, which means that uh, the B field is increasing, pointing out of the page. Okay, so in that case, B induced, B induced should be pointing into the page to cancel this change. And then using right hand rule, you use your thumb pointing into the page, the forefinger will be will be like clockwise. It will be like clockwise. And the induced current is uh, uh, clockwise. And using right hand rule, you can see the uh, determinant. Oh, sorry. Okay, so this is question A. We have E induces 5.2 volt, and then it is a uh, it is something like this. It, this is E induced. E induces a 5.2 volt, 5.2 volt at T equals 10 seconds. Okay, so it asks what is the current in the loop at T equals 10 seconds? At T equals 10 seconds. Okay, so um, so uh, for part B, I is E net over the resistance. So this is simply the uh, Ohm's law. The Ohm's law. So it's just the total E. EMF, total EMF uh, over the resistance of the loop. So it also tells, it already tells you that um, the resistance of the loop is 2 ohm. So this is nothing but 2 ohm. And for the E net, we have E induced. We have E induced. And also we have, uh, we have we have this battery, we have this battery. So we need to care for whether we should add them together or we should subtract them. Okay, so this is easy to make mistakes, <laughs> in my opinion, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, this is easy to make mistakes. So yeah, as much as E is in this direction, E is in this, in this direction, so what is the direction of what is the direction of the E battery? The E battery should be something like this. This is E battery. This is E battery. So why? Because if you just ignore E induced, 
we only have this battery. The current should be something like this. The current should be flow out from the positive node and then going here back to the negative node. So we found the E induced E band should be counterclockwise. Okay. So E induced is clockwise, E battery is counterclockwise. So we should subtract them. So let's see which one is bigger. Here it says E battery is two volt. Two volt. So clearly we can see that E induced is larger than E bat. So here we have E induce minus E bat. Uh, which means E induced determine the final uh, direction of the current. Okay, so this is 5.2 minus 2 all over 2. So this is a 3.2 over 2, which is 1.6A. And of course, the current is uh, clockwise. Although this doesn't ask you, to, but I just let you know uh, the, the direction of the eye uh, depends on which one is larger. And here, uh, E induced is larger. Okay, so far, any questions? No questions. Okay, so here we have an other sample problem. Uh, it says the figure shows um, a rectangular loop of wire immersed in a non-uniform and varying magnetic field B that is perpendicular to and directly into the page. Directly into the page. So this cross uh, means the B field is pointing into the page. So the field's magnitude is given by this expression. This expression. Uh, the loop has width W equals 3 meter, height equals H. So what are the magnitude and direction of the induced EMF around the loop at T equals 0 0.1 second? Okay, so this is a bit more a bit more difficult because the speed field is not only related to the time but also related to the X coordinate. So which means that this is the x-axis. Uh, this is the x-axis. So for this point, you plug in x equals 0. For this point, you plug in x equals capital W. Okay, for, for the middle, uh, you only uh, you, you plug in the, the x-axis coordinate into here to see uh, what is the B view at that point. Okay, so here we need to determine the magnitude and direction of the e induced EMF. So of course, we should know the magnetic flux first, and then we can take the derivative of it. Then, yeah, according to the Faraday's law, we can know the uh, how large the EMF is. Okay, so first of all, we we should try to calculate the phi b of this of this loop. So phi b is integration of b dot uh, da so this surface integral and yeah b is actually perpendicular to the plane and of course you can just define uh, da also pointing into the page so when da pointing into the page you just all the things uh, follow this da for considering the uh, positive or negative Okay, so here we should have integration of B times dA. And here we should make, uh, we should use some change of variable rather than just writing it as uh, B times A because uh, B is not uniform over the, over the whole area. Yeah, this part B is smaller, this part B is larger. So B is actually related to X, but not related to Y, this is this is a good news. Otherwise, dA should be something like dx dy. But here, it is not related to dy. So we can simply have uh, dA is h times dA. We just need to cut, cut the rectangle into many, many strips rather than uh, many, many small areas. So we, 
we only need to cut it vertically into many many strip so inside a strip it is constant because um, the B view is not related to Y coordinate okay so the B view at this point and that point are exactly the same so we can consider uh, over this whole area B is uniform but over different strip B is not uniform so we need to do integration so we can just make dA to be h times dx like this okay so it becomes uh, B times h dx and we would like to integrate from 0 to w 0 to w okay so here we can plug in b equals 40 square x square here so here we have integration and then we have 40 square x square and then h dx and then 0 to w 0 to w is uh, 0 to w so here we can try to uh, do some simplification let's see uh, 4 t square and also h are not related to x so we can just move it uh, move them outside so we have 4 t square t square and then h h is actually 2 meter 2 meter so times 2 and then we have an integration of x squared dx x squared dx okay so this 0 this is 0 w is 3 meter so here we have write it as 3 okay so here we have 8 t squared and then this antiderivative of x squared should be x cubed over 3 x cubed over 3 and then we evaluate x from 0 to x equals uh, 3 okay so here we have a uh, 80 square and then uh, 27 over 3 minus 0 over 3 so which is 9 so all together we have a 72 t square so next we would use uh, uh, Faraday's law to determine the EMF so we just take the absolute value of E which will be d phi b d t and then we just plug in this expression here so it is d d t and then 72 t squared which is 144 t okay so here we would like to uh, know the magnitude and direction at t equals 0 0.1 s which means that we just evaluate e at t equals 0 0.1 s so which is 144 times 0 0.1 which is 14.4 volt so this is the magnitude of the induced EMF and for the direction we use the lens law to determine it okay so here uh, x is a positive value because it's from 0 to 3 so it's all the way positive or at least not negative t we consider it at uh, 0 0.1 second t is also positive t is also positive and here we can see we can see this one d5 bdt is also 144 t which is also a positive value so which means the rate of change of the magnetic flux is a positive value which means that uh, b induced should be pointing out of the page should be pointing out of the page so in that case using right hand rule the thumb pointing out of the page so your finger so forefinger will be in this direction which means that the induce the induce uh, emf emf is uh, counter counterclockwise 
counterclockwise.